Yes, I was. I even have it written right here. All right, are we rolling? <clears throat> okay. Well, this is the last class of Christ Life slash Crucified Life. It's funny that slash goes before crucified life, but nonetheless, <laughs> there it is. All right, what I want to do <clears throat> is uh, I will need your attention on this part, contrary to the other parts. <laughs> and that is that I'm going to read um, <clears throat> chapter 3 again, and then I'm going to sort of put it in a little different form and hopefully you will remember certain things that are said that are, that are in chapter 3 that are just put in a slightly different form to help us uh, maybe grasp, to help us to formulate, to help us to <clears throat> have signals from the Holy Spirit that that's, that's another way of saying certain verses. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here we go. Chapter 3 of Colossians. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, um, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity or love, which is the bond of perfectness. <clears throat> all right, so um, just going to read a couple of things, and you should be able to particularly recognize the first part, but they're not, they're sort of put in a little bit different way, uh, or they are, they are taking from several different places that things have been spoken and putting them together. For example, this one, you are dead and your life is hid, okay? Now, it didn't just, it didn't say that right in one verse. It said that in two verses, but there is a reality that you are dead and your life is hid. So what, uh, in doing that, what I'm trying to draw out is this fact that in being crucified with Christ, that's not the end of you, but it is the end of you in relationship to your old members which are upon the earth. And that's the wording that it, that's the wording that it used in the King James. For ye are dead and your life is hid. So that's like a signal. Okay, if I'm dead, and my life is hid, then what? Okay. <clears throat> so if you are dead and your life is hid, then where is your life? Ye are, uh, ye, and I left out one word, ye be risen with Christ. That actually sounds sort of like a pirate. Ye be risen with Christ. Ye <clears throat> uh, <laughs> be risen with Christ. Then my life is where Christ sitteth. Okay, <clears throat> my life is now a risen life. So in, instead of just saying you are raised up with him, he said that your life is hid with Christ and God. 
seek those things where he is, where Christ sitteth. So I'd simply just broke it down to this. If you are dead or, or ye be risen with Christ, then my life is where Christ sitteth. My life is now a risen life, <clears throat> which is him, because we're dead. You are now the dead life. There's only one life, and I capitalize one life, and that's his life. Okay, so <clears throat> in the reality of the cross, in the reality of God's heart, in the, in the reality of what Jesus accomplished on that cross, what did he accomplish? He accomplished a death, a hiding, as it were, of our new life, a direction of where that life is above, a direction where it is no longer, um, your members which are in the earth. <clears throat> And he's funneling all this into two main concepts, and those main concepts are him or us apart from him. Him, Jesus, or us apart from him. <clears throat> all right. So um, if you believe this as true, then number one, seek, and number two, set. Do you all remember that in the first couple of verses? Seek and set. Okay, so <clears throat> out of all the things that it could have said, <coughs> it simply brought it down to two words, to seek and to set. Okay? All right, so uh, Colossians 3, in my opinion, can sound complicated. But it's not. It's a matter of seeking and setting, or not seeking certain things and not setting. <clears throat> so, if you're the if you're the dead life, as it were, you are uh, you are um, you are in a state of death. Therefore, own it. <laughs> That's us. Then own it. Don't fight it. Own it. If Jesus said it's, that's the case, own it. If the word of God says that, if, the, if that's one of the main functions of the cross, <clears throat> then own that fact. Um, and to, to truly own that then gives you one area of direction related to seek and to set. Seek the above life, okay? Seek the life. It's above, but it is the only life if we embrace the death. If we don't embrace the death, then we open the door to a life that God put away on the cross, but we have not mortified. Does that make sense? Okay. But if we own that, then we will go, okay, well then, <clears throat> that's the case. Then I'm going to seek the above life. I'm going to seek his life. I'm, and we'll get into the other part of that in just a second. And then, <clears throat> and then set your affections. So I put seek the above life. It is the things of his life. Seek those things which are above. It's the things of this life that we now have. You know, somebody can say, well, the above life is, you know, being saved and going to heaven one day. You know, one day we'll have the above life. But this is speaking of now. This is speaking of him or us. The dead life, which is to him non-existent, or uh, which, which includes our members which are on this earth, or the above life, which <clears throat> are the things of his life. And then it includes, based on the cross, the things of his death. The things of his death. We seek the things of his life because that's the only reality that exists now in God's mind and, and should exist in us as we reckon on it or mortify or 
or set our heart on the things of the life that he says is now our life. Um, <clears throat> and so it is seek the above life. It is the things of his life, and it is the things of our death. All right. So now Colossians puts it that way, but in my opinion, it's, that's really a pretty simple formula there. I mean, you know, there's a death, and there's a life. There's a, there are the dead, and there is the one who lives. Okay? <clears throat> to be joined to the one who lives gives us a risen life, but it also means to, for that to truly be a risen life means that he is our resurrection and the life. It must mean that, and it does mean that, because he said that in, you know, John 11. So, um, <clears throat> those things which are above, okay? I remember John the ba Baptist said, you know, uh, he is above me. I'm not worthy to unloose his shoe latch. Um, there was a recognition that in his mind he hasn't even come to the cross but he recognizes that there's an above life than my life. My life is a, a life in the dirt. My life is in the earth. My life, unless it's his life. That's, that's the thing that Colossians is saying. <clears throat> All right, set your affections. Set affections on the things of his life. All right, so that's, um, we could say, we, we could, you know, there's all kind of ways that people go with this. They, you know, well, set, those, set your affections on things above. Okay, so I'm believing for heaven. You know, I'm, my affections are there. Well, <clears throat> okay, so what is it, what is in heaven that your affections are on? Well, the best answer would be him. So then knock out all the other stuff. You know, you see what I'm saying? Knock out the heaven and just make it him, period. You know. But if you're if the affections are being set on heaven and what we're talking about in heaven is um, you know, eternal happiness or, you know, I'm gonna get a mansion or, you know, gates of pearl, you know, um, then if your affections are on like streets of gold and gates of pearl. Those are the same affections that are on your job and the money that's in the bank. and <laughs> That's not above. <laughs> You've already struck out. <laughs> you already missed that scripture. Your affections are still on earthly things that you're projecting up there. <clears throat> and that's what you want. All right. So things above not on things on the earth. That's a direct quote. Things above, not on things on the earth. The things of his life. Okay, So that moves us into <clears throat> thoughts of oneness, <coughs> which I believe opens the door. This is just a side remark. I believe it opens, opens the door to the inheritance. Oneness opens the door to the inheritance as he understands it, not as we do. Because you, you talk about inheritance to most people and, and even, even Christians and it's like, you know, well, what am I gonna get? <laughs> so there we are back again with the gates of gold and streets, you know, streets of gold and gates of pearl. Uh, wrong affections. Our affections are not on things above. Our, still, we're after things that are on the earth. They're still on the earth, too. <clears throat> so, um, stop seeking to get all fullness into your earthly members. Can I get amen on that one? <laughs> because, and that's really what it says, see? It's, it says that... Um, in him, you remember this in chapter 2, in him 
dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right. So we say, Lord, I want your fullness. Fill me with it. Well, he said, all fullness is in here. <laughs> okay. Yes, I get it. Fill me with it. No, it's in him, and you seek him, not his fullness. Okay, now we're really finding out our affections then, aren't we? Because <clears throat> maybe we're, go we're looking at him and we're going, oh, that's beautiful, and I want that, and, and this and that, and I want that. But it's not of that that he can put in you. It's what he is full of because it's him. And you, you, can't, you can't have the fullness without having him. You know. So, um, so I wrote, stop seeking to get all fullness into your earthly members because he's saying, mortify your earthly members. He's saying, you know, all of those things that, that move us, <clears throat> Um, raise that level up to him. Uh, he's saying, uh, well, I'll just keep going. <clears throat> Stop setting your affections on your dead life. <laughs> you know? Well, okay, so I said something up here about that like um, if you believe this is true then seek and set because you wouldn't you know um, you wouldn't be seeking something that to God is already rejected by the cross it's rejected and then there's something which is, which is accepted by the resurrection as seen by the resurrection and that is the Lamb of God. That is the spirit of the crucified. It is the crucified life that he was pleased with. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, the pitter-patter little feet, it's so cute. All right, stop seeking completion in your dead, rejected life. Because you are complete in him. So why are we trying it here? Okay, well, I'm trying it here because I'm a Christian and I'm seeking completion and I want to be everything that God wants. Okay, well, let's start with dying. And then, then let's start with being drawing from him, that it is his life, that the completion is him. That, you know, he, when he sat down, it says in Hebrews, the work was done. Okay. So <clears throat> we're, if we're seeking completion on any level, and so I, I kind of wrote these things trying to get us to be a little more real with this. Does that under, make sense? To make us go, okay, wait. <clears throat> I'm setting my affections on a dead life. Okay, that can be pie in the sky doctrine, that can be, but I'm trying to get us to, to pull it down to two areas. Either our affections are on where our members are, or our affections are on the place where he's placed us. Remember what Ephesians said? He has raised us up and made to sit together in heavenly places in union with Christ. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so that can be doctrinalized to such a point that we still set our affections on our dead life. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can, you can still say I've been raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ while your affections are still drawing from a a dead life, a rejected life that was crucified. Okay, so that means we're not getting it. That would mean that we're not. We don't really. It, it, we have been able to hear it, <clears throat> claim that we understand it, but it has no power in our life. 
we still are motivated by um, by things that he's put to death, by things that he's put to death. <clears throat> um, so we're using the example of completion, for you are complete in him. You are complete in him. You're not complete by him. Uh, another example of that is um, Ephesians 1, 6. You are accepted in the beloved. It does not say you are accepted by the beloved. It says you're accepted in him. If you're in him, you're one with him. And he's, he's going, yeah, this is my risen body. But if you're, if you're trying to get his acceptance, you know, if you're thinking in terms of, uh, it's the same thing like completion. Stop seeking completion in your dead, rejected life. Stop seeking to be accepted by him by setting forth your dead, rejected life. So this is really narrowing it down now. Out of all the people in the world, there's only one life that God accepts, and you're accepted in that life. There's, there's only one way to come to completion in him. There's only one way to get fullness in him. And as that, as that is um, digested into us, and as that, that becomes uh, a pursuit to us because it does say see it has to become a suit pursuit because he says seek those things set your affection so that's where you're that's really the starting point if you if you're seeking isn't in that area especially because you think I have that area I, I can teach that area myself I can impress people with it but our f affections are somewhere else, then that area has, no wonder it hasn't taken over because we're not following the order. Our affections are not there. We're not seeking that. We're, I mean, I've seen that over the years here in our Bible school that it's very easy to start getting the terminology and it's very easily uh, set in our minds that we have that because I heard it and I understood it. But I mean, have we really understood it? You know? So, <clears throat> in my opinion, the best thing to do is to say, Lord, I clearly don't have this. I clearly don't fully understand it. So, um, I am asking you to just move by your spirit so that I can seek this reality of you in this manner. And so that my affections will be in you. Okay, so it's real, it's kind of in this third chapter saying, you know, this is real easy. You, you remember what I just read, you know, uh, um, put on this, put off that. Everything that it's doing is just going down and dividing those two things. And it's saying um, there is a reality that the Father has that is Christ and it is ours in him. Seek for the hidden life to be revealed. Set your affections on the life that is being revealed. And if you do that, and if you really do that, then your affections will be there. You will go, well, my affections are no longer on me. My affections are no longer on my status in the earth or my lack of status in the earth or my affections are no longer this or that. All the things that become important to us, um, uh, there's, a, there's an old song that we used to sing years ago and it says, um, and the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Okay. <clears throat> So how, you, so, so how do you do that? As you seek him, those things begin to grow dim. They, they lose their power. They lose their force. Um, but if you feed those things, if you feed those things, you know, then they're going to grow. And they'll start, they'll start, you know, we know the scripture says, he must increase and I must decrease. But if we're 
if we're putting our intents and our affections on that, then we're, we would never say this with our mouth for fear of lightning strike, but we're saying he must decrease and I must increase. I mean, it doesn't even sound fun to hear that that could be what we're saying. But that's, that could be it because we're, we're increasing in the wrong, in the wrong realm. <clears throat> All right, so stop seeking completion in your dead, rejected life. Stop seeking to make Saul respectable. All right, so that's out of 1 Samuel. If you want to turn there, we'll look at that. <clears throat> 1 Samuel chapter 15. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but <clears throat> um, there are parts of it that we, we need to look at. 1 Samuel 15 <clears throat> and verse, starting with verse 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, <clears throat> Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. Okay, so right there, that's, we're going to read more, but right there. <clears throat> this is Saul speaking, King Saul. And with probably all his heart, he believes that he has obeyed the voice of the Lord. Okay? He believes that he has gone the way which the Lord had sent him specifically. All right. Um, to me, that's a scary thing. I mean, that would make me want to go, Lord, I don't want to be deceived. I want to, I don't want to believe that I'm, you know, obeying you when maybe I'm not and that I am going your way that you sent me when I'm not. <clears throat> um, but Colossians is telling us um, to seek the Lord. And the scriptures say to seek the Lord, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Okay, well, I remembered a certain juncture where I was at when I was trying to get hold of this to, to be at work in me. And I was getting discouraged because I believe that maybe I'm, I'm not, you know, fully loving the Lord and seeking the Lord with all my heart, soul, and strength, and mind, and um, and and I, it, w it was very hurtful to me because I didn't want to hurt the Lord, and I just said to the Holy Spirit, or I said to the Father, I said, I, I just don't, you know, I, you know, I can't fix everything in me right now. And he said, well, what's the first commandment? So I quoted it to him. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And I went, see? <laughs> see that? He said, I didn't say with all my heart, soul, strength, and mind. It's the Lord talking to me. He said, I'm asking you where you're at right now. With all that you have right now. Not all that you're supposed to have, <laughs> but all that is that you have of your mind, of your heart. Seek me, love me, like that. I went, because I knew I wouldn't. It wasn't. It didn't reach to the furthest reaches of everything. I knew that it wasn't there. But I in. As much as I knew, I went with what I knew of seeking the Lord. <clears throat> All right, so uh, he goes on to say, uh, the way, gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people, notice he, he blames the people for taking the spoils, but the people took of the spoils, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. All right, so a bunch of stuff here, but um, first of all, it's, it's the old Adam and Eve thing, you know. 
what y'all doing with them fig leaves on? <laughs> What's going on here? You know. You know, Adam goes, it's her. She did it. She's the bad one. And she goes, it's the serpent. He's the bad one. <clears throat> You know, God has to bring us to places. He has to cover us. He covered them in skins, which meant that something died, and covered them, not in fig leaves, but in something that gave its life. If, we, if you can't give your life right now fully, which probably none of us in this room can, then be covered by the Lamb. I'm serious. And stay covered, and be, and that means be in that slain lamb, one with him, and his life will will take over more and more. You'll seek, and your affections will change, and they will grow. So, so where should our mind be and our heart be? On the fear of how far off we are? No. On him, to seek him, to set as much as we can on him. And don't you believe that if you do that, that, that he'll bring you in more and you'll see him more, even if it's not great, great revelation at that point where you're really seeing his face in all fullness, you, you draw into him. You're moved by him. You realize this isn't anything like it sounded like to my ears. This is a lot better. But you keep going. And you keep going after him, and you make that your, your goal. <clears throat> but the people uh, took of the spoil, the sheep, oxen, the chief of the things, the best of the things, which should have been utter, utterly destroyed. And they, they kept those sheep and oxen and all that, which should have been utterly destroyed. And they kept it to sacrifice unto the Lord. Okay, now that's significant. And that's one of the main reasons why we're here. We're not going to talk about Gilgal but right now. Verse 22, and, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Okay. All right. So um, we can make that all about just obedience. But if you look at that scripture, let me, let me go ahead and read all of it. And then we'll come back to that. Uh, again, verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is a, as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. All right. So... Um, it didn't say he rejected Saul from being in Israel. Didn't say he could no longer, you know, go to the temple or whatever, just throwing out stuff to help you see, you know, that he couldn't read the Torah and God would, you know, speak or any of that kind of stuff. It says he's rejected as king because he can't rule in that kind of a state. He, he's commu communicating something different than that which is Christ, and Christ and him crucified. And he's, um, he's allowing things and doing things. Well, okay, every one of us, believe it or not, have done that at some point in our walk. We have. How are you going to learn? How are you going to learn? You have to make mistakes. You have to be off from that. But this is a serious thing because he's been, there's been several things before this and will be some after it. So in verse 22 again, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord his great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. He's saying that based on saving things that should have been put to death at the cross in terms of rejected and sacrificing them to the Lord as if they're acceptable. 
Shall I say that again? <laughs> Jim's going, I don't want to hear it again. <laughs> oh, me. <clears throat> I wrote down, obedience to put to death what God rejects is better than trying to put it to death by calling it an acceptable sacrifice. Any of you guys take notes? Yeah. Write this down. Obedience to put to death Obedience to put to death what God rejects. Obedience to put to death what God rejects is better than trying to put it to death. Obedience to put to death what God rejects is better than trying to put it to death by calling it an acceptable sacrifice. I'll read it again. Obedience to put to death what God rejects. Okay, so what does that mean? That's talking about Amalek and its sheep and their goats and everything. And he's saying you should have been obedient to put to death what God rejected. But instead, so I'll read the sentence again. Obedience to put to death what God rejects is better than trying to put it to death by calling it an acceptable sacrifice. What do you think? That's what, that's what was wrong. That's what was wrong. Is the obedience he wants isn't that you never mess up or whatever. He wants you in line with the cross. Okay, so, so he's saying, he's, it's like he's talking about the cross in one fashion here, and he's saying, I want that old man, the old life, I want him dead. I want it dead, put it to death. He's saying, but what you've done is you've made another altar over here and you're taking that old man and you're trying to offer him up to God as if he's acceptable. Like a special offering God smelling and going, this is beautiful. I love this. And Saul doesn't see it, but Samuel does. So I wrote, you are offering up in sacrifice what God already rejects and is dis distasteful to him. This old man, this old life of ours is already rejected. Okay. So let's go all the way back to the cross where he took the old man, and this is what Romans 6 is all about. He took the old nature, he took our old life, and he put it to death on the cross because he rejected it. It is not acceptable and distasteful to him. Can I get amen? Okay. So, now he doesn't, you know, for, as far as he's concerned, that life is done away. All right. So Saul comes over here, and he's trying to give his life, the old life, and call it Christ. Call it the acceptable sacrifice. And trying to offer it up so that God will go, this is really good. It's a good thing you didn't kill the old man. I just love this fragrance. <laughs> no, it's a stench in the nostrils of God. He doesn't love it. He sent his own son to the cross to get rid of it. Okay? And now he wants what? He wants his son to come forth. That's the one that's the fragrant sacrifice. Yes. So would an example of that, I just kind of read my page online and I loved it. I don't know if you can try it. Sure. Right. If you will, and and continue to press on living life that way with the. Oh, but I'm not going to react. 
Right. I'm not putting my faith in those things anymore. Right. I'm reckoning all of that dead, and Christ is going to come forth as my life as I seek Him and send mm -hmm. my heart. Is that is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, I think that's that's a good example of it. I mean, you know, there's probably plenty of examples of that in the Bible of just specific things too. But yeah, it, that's exactly it. Because what you just described is Colossians chapter three and and two and three. You just described the the difference between the two and and uh, where it keeps going back and it says for you're dead, you know. And then over here it says uh, if you be risen with Christ, and we're going well, which is it? <laughs> I want to know. Well, you're dead and you're risen with Christ, but the one who's risen with Him is not the dead man. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and we we are now one with Him, therefore it is His life. So. Yeah, the goal is, <clears throat> I don't know of anybody that has perfectly got this where they never react at, over anything or this or that. Um, and Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you something. It'll make you free. So <clears throat> it's not an instantaneous thing just 2,000 years ago. It's true, but it has to be worked into us by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. So it's not like you can you can't see everything until the Holy Spirit begins to open your eyes to this. So Absolutely. That's what we're, we're crying out for is seeking. Absolutely. Yeah. Him, and as we do that, He shows us what's not Him. Amen. Is what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it really is a process, and the, and the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus said He's coming. He's going to take that which is mine and show it unto you, and so uh, to me, you, you see these things and you say, okay, well, that's, you know, I remember when I was early in this and I was <clears throat> trying to, I was trying to sort it out, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I remember going, okay, you know, because the scriptures talk about the flesh and it talks about the devil and it talks about the sins and it talks about and all this stuff. So I'm trying to sort all that out, you know, and I even wrote them all. I just spent hours writing everything down and go, okay, what's what? <clears throat> so I get in the circumstance and I go, okay, is this my old life? You know, because you can get in religious situations and you're kind of going, is that, is that my old life? So I go, is this my old life? Uh, and I go, you know, I mean, I'd be, I'd be confused because I couldn't figure it all out. And one day the Holy Spirit said, stop trying to figure out what's going, what is not Christ and just say, is that Christ? And I'd go, nope. <laughs> you know, and then it just got easy. Everything just got a lot easier. You know, I went, nope, okay. Do you want it to be Christ? Yes, the Holy Spirit goes, I'll be your huckleberry then. You know, I'll, I'll bring you into that, you know. And it's, it really is beautiful because if you stay on that path, you're seeking and you're setting more and more as you go. I mean, every step that I make, I always, I always go, man, you know, I'm, there's, there's more of him. I'm surprised at how much more of him there is. And that's what I want, you know? <clears throat> okay, so still on this thing, uh, um, let's look at verse 35 in 1 Samuel 15. And Samuel came no more to see Saul <clears throat> until the day of his death. Nev nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Okay, so two things are going on. The Lord is repenting that he made Saul king. Okay, again, he's not saying, I'm sorry I made Saul. I hate him. He's just saying, I am sorry I made him king. He's not, he doesn't have that, that spirit. <clears throat> But Samuel's over here mourning and going, oh, God, you know, hey, please restore him and all this stuff. So go to uh, chapter 16, verse 1. <clears throat> 1 Samuel 16, 1. And the Lord said to Samuel, how long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehem. 
Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. All right. So the Lord is saying, stop trying to take the old man and offer him up as acceptable. I've rejected him. Get with me. Reject him. And now that's not at the end of it. There's a bigger part. That's what he's saying here. There's something way greater. Let's go anoint David. In other words, Jesus as king. And let's make him king. And let's offer him up. And God will be pleased because he's a man after my own heart. Isn't that good? All right. So these are using the very words in a certain sense that Colossians are using. Reject that life because I have rejected it. Okay? All right, we're going get, to get moving here. <clears throat> um, okay, I think I'm going to skip a part here. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm just going to read some things I wrote. Therefore, celebrate your funeral. <laughs> Over here. Okay? You can celebrate your life over here later, but celebrate your funeral because it is true. Become unaffectionate toward your members, which are on the earth. Embrace your dead state. Uncouple from your former life. <laughs> I mean, can you say, I was really praying over these that the Lord would give me wording that would say the same thing that Colossians has said, but it would quicken something. Yes. Yes, of course. Celebrate your funeral. I, I numbered these. Number one. Number two, become unaffectionate toward your members, which are on the earth. Number three, embrace your dead state. And number four, uncouple from your former life. And I put including pulls, lusts, attitudes, and mindsets. Well, well, all right. So, <clears throat> so then, so here's the instead. Okay, number one, instead celebrate oneness. Because that's a lifesaver. I mean, that, that means that all that he is, you are. In fact, I, I'm sure I've got that down here somewhere. <clears throat> celebrate oneness number two live as a bride heart and what that means is affection comes with that yes. Yes. set your affections yes. number three live where he lives yes. move in <laughs> right <laughs> so should, should I move in with him Yes. <clears throat> um, number four, sing his songs, meaning the joys that he has in his heart. Find them out and sing those songs with him. Yes. Number five, embrace him and not our old rebellious wife ways. Yes. I'm not talking to you. Unless... The Lord's talking to you. All right. We're, we're getting low on time here, so let me just read. You can mark down this scripture. It's uh, Matthew 8, <clears throat> 21, 22, unless you can get there real fast. Um, <clears throat> and, it said, and, and this is Jesus talking. This is related to Jesus. Uh, another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Okay. <clears throat> so the guy comes to him and he's a disciple and here's what he says. Lord, let me first. You see the wording there? Let me first. I want to, let me be first for a change or in this situation. Well, you're talking to the wrong person because that's an affront to his nature. For Jesus didn't put himself, what does it say? Who, who didn't, you know, what is it? John, I mean, uh, Romans 15, <clears throat> where he didn't put himself first, it says. Um, 
So I wrote down, let the dead, and then I put in parentheses, those dead with Christ, let the dead, those dead with Christ, bury the dead, do the funeral for the old man. Let those who are dead with Christ do the funeral for the old man. A little different way of saying it. <laughs> you know, one reason you have a funeral is so you, that you can remember that a death took place. <clears throat> in this case, don't visit the tomb. <laughs> and in Jesus' case, he's not there if you visit the yeah. tomb. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> um, so I wrote, but a disconnected life from the head cannot summon up his life, but will be given to, and then I'm quoting Colossians 3, 8, lying, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy, filthy communication out of your mouth. All right, a disconnect from his life, a disconnect from the head. We're his body, right? A disconnect means that we we will not be able to, the words I put, was summing up his life. We can't. It won't come. Because we're still separate. I want your fullness. No, you don't. You want him to be the fullness. I want, I want you to make me complete. No, you don't. You are complete in him. You're, you're, there's a disconnect from the head. Okay? All right, and then this is the final things that I'll read. And <clears throat> don't seek for a greater destiny for your earthly, don't seek for a greater destiny for your earthly life form. <laughs> Anybody like Star Trek or any of that stuff? <clears throat> don't seek for a greater destiny for your earthly life form. Jesus has offered to share his destiny with you. By oneness. Do away with and bury your old grave clothes. Put them off. Put off the old man is what, what it says in Colossians there. But I'm just, do away with and bury your old grave clothes. Put them off. Uh, like a new garment, be totally wrapped up in his life form. Like you're just all wrapped up in this new garment. And put on Christ is what it says. Put on the new man. Okay? Like a new garment. Put him on. Be totally wrapped up in him. That means also setting your affections. Okay? Make him your source, your fountain from which you drink and share. So I'm going to embellish that just a little bit down here in a second. One last paragraph. <clears throat> in the realm where your members dwell, there are different races, human preferences, a variety of castes, but mortify these. They do not exist in the above realm where Christ is all and fills those whose affections and pursuits are set toward this end. And if you choose this life, then prove the life of it by giving it. In other words, Drink from this fountain and pass the cup to those around you. All right. Want me to read it one more time? <clears throat> In the realm where your members dwell, there are different races, human preferences, a variety of castes, but mortify these. They do not exist in the above realm where Christ is all and fills those whose affections and pursuits are set toward this end. And if you choose this life, then prove the life of it by giving it. In other words, drink from this fountain and pass the cup to those around you. Okay. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name and we know, as you, you told me when I was young, you told me that <clears throat> to seek you with all my mind where I was at and all the heart that I had at that moment. And Father, now I'm in a completely different place and I can seek you to more of your satisfaction. But Father, I just pray your blessing upon each one here as they 
seek and set as they find you and find that you're nothing like what their minds told it it was going to be like. The freedom of your life, the beauty of it, the glory of it that will shine throughout all eternity. Father, may what you wanted to say tonight, whether it's in my words or you speaking individually to people, may what you wanted to say tonight have come across and bring joy to your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to take a little break. And